Black holes we all heard of them, and I don't just mean that mysterious place where all your loose change seems to disappear, otherwise known as your children. I'm talking about that region of space with a gravitational field so intense that no matter radiation or even light can escape it. There's a joke that astrophysicists like to tell, and it goes something like this a star walks into a black hole. But it doesn't seem phase the black hole turns to the star and says, Sir, I don't think you understand that the gravity of this situation, but as with most jokes carry a ring of truth to them. Until 2011 astrophysicists were not able to competently report this phenomenon of stars forming into black holes but now they can, and the total number of cases of stars collapsing into black holes reported in till 2016 have been three interestingly enough. Although it's not in an astrology book, there's an entire chapter in the Quran called The Star, and the first birth of that chapter is by the lead when it falls. In this chapter the Quran describes characteristics of a, a place so similar to what we now know is fitting the description of the black hole. That it will send a shiver down your spine. In the Islamic faith, it is believed that God granted Prophet Muhammad a memorable trip to the heavens. This trip was miraculous, of course as there was no technological way that the Prophet could have taken such a journey. At the time, seeing as how planes hadn't even been invented, let alone rocket ships. Nonetheless, if you study this miraculous night journey closely you'll find that there are many clues to prove that this incredible journey did indeed occur not only that where it took place it turns out to be of great interest. Because astonishingly enough the description of the area the Prophet ascended matches the characteristics of what we now know about the black hole. So let's look at what we now know about the black hole through the recent discoveries of science and compare it to the mysterious area that Quran describes in its pages as part of this miraculous night journey the Prophet took firstly in verse 16 of chapter 53, the Quran describes this place and space as very dark. It describes it as darkness covered or draped in the evening, which is not surprising, the space is a pretty dark place. Even so, some areas are darker than others, but nothing is darker than a black hole. Because black holes have such immense forces of gravity, nothing, not even light, can escape from them. That's why they're black and because they're black they are veiled from direct observation, they nevertheless reveal themselves indirectly, as scientists have special tools that can help them see how stars that are very close to black holes, and differently than other stars, because of the immense the force of gravity that black holes have. And this helped them identify the location of black holes secondly according to the Quran, when ordinary people look at this dark area, in space they can't see it directly, as their eyes bypass or surpass the boundary of this area. And they only see beyond it or around it. It's almost as if this area behaves as a lens science, it turns out it has a term for this called a gravitational lens. Let's take a closer look. We usually think of light traveling in straight beams but near a black hole the powerful force of gravity bends and warps rays of light around it creating a visual imprint on the surrounding material. Astrophysicists have proved that a black hole bends light to act like a cosmic magnifying glass giving astronomers a view of an even more distant galaxy behind it. This, my friends, are what we call a gravitational lens however. The Quran brings our attention to an interesting fact regarding this matter in verse 17 of chapter 53, when it says the eyesight of the Prophet Muhammad did not swerve, nor did it pass beyond the boundary. He certainly saw it as one of the most significant signs of his Lord, but this first be alluding to the fact that the Prophet Muhammad actually visited the black hole and looked at it directly thirdly the Quran describes, his areas shaped wide at the top with sloping sides, and a narrow tube at the bottom almost funnel shaped in verse 14 of chapter 53, when it says by the finite juju tree, is likened to the shape of a juju tree, which fits the same description as the one I just mentioned. A black hole makes such a deep dent in space time, and that's why it appears to look like a funnel despite the black hole's effects on the movement of matter, and its tremendous suction power the black hole spacetime bent remains hidden behind its event horizon. But it's always surrounded by an area that does not allow light to escape and therefore cannot be directly observed and fourthly once again in verse 14 chapter 53 by nitrogen 2 tree the Quran reveals that this area is finite. So how do his claims back up with science until recently? 
It was assumed that black holes had such an infinite strength of the gravitational field that occurs deep within them, ensuring that nothing, not even light, can ever escape them, and a trip into a black hole, is a one-way journey once you cross the event horizon, the point at which light can't escape. There's no turning back, but researchers such as George Pullen Rodolfo Gambini and Jared Hoof have recently been able to prove otherwise and show that energy can escape the black holes, and the black holes are finite. This essentially means that black holes don't end in an influence entity, but rather act as a portal to another universe. The acclaimed British physicist, Professor Stephen Hawking supports this claim, and suggests that there could be a way out of the black hole. When he famously said, if you feel you're in a black hole, don't give up there's a way out, it might have a passage to another universe, but you couldn't come back to our universe, so although I'm keen on space flight, I'm not going to try that in conclusion. The Quran swears by the star when it falls that the Prophet Muhammad traveled through space and reached an area that, according to the Quran, is one of God's most significant signs, a much darker place than its surroundings. This darkness hides its funnel juju tree shape underneath and sees this area directly, as their eyesight will swerve and pass beyond its bounder. Finally, we're told that this area is finite and a portal to another universe. So it would seem that the Quran and astrophysicists agree as a way in which the Quran describes, this mysterious area matches what we now call the black hole.